Hey guys, glad to see you again. I know it's Tuesday and it's a bit of a dreary day. That means it's kind of yucky outside with all of the rain. Um, I did want to come on and just say thanks to all my friends that are still sending me pictures of all the things that they like to do at home with their families as well as the work that you're completing. I know I saw some friends doing already lessons today and drawing some pictures because it's National Crayon Day. And um, I just wanted to share with you um, the rest of the story that I had picked out for you, the Sunshine Makes the Seasons book. I decided to cut it a little shorter than I anticipated because in the section in the middle of the book, there's a really long experiment. And um, we're just not gonna be able to do that because we're not in a classroom. So we're gonna move on to the next section of the book and we're gonna be collecting facts again. So if you remember, I've got my anchor chart here and we're just gonna go over some of the things we um, learned yesterday. We learned that the sun makes the earth hot or cold. The earth turns toward the sun for day and the earth turns away from the sun for night. So not only is the earth moving around in an orbit, it's also moving in a rotation that creates day and night. So when the sun's moving in an orbit, and we get closer to, or excuse me, when the earth is moving in an orbit and we get closer to the sun, it becomes what month? I hope you said summer, because it's hot in the summer. And when the sun is, excuse me, when the earth is orbiting away from the sun, it gets much colder. And what, what time of year would that be? I hope you said winter, because it's very cold in the winter. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the seasons that happen in both the northern hemisphere of the earth and the southern hemisphere of the earth. And we're gonna talk about that today. Let me put down my marker so I don't mark on my pants. The southern half of the earth has seasons too. Let's see if you can see there. There it is. It says, they are opposite of our seasons. When it is summer and we are going to the beach, the people in the southern half of the earth have winter. They're skating and skiing. The North Pole and the South Pole also have seasons. Their winters are very cold and very dark. You can see the guys up front or up top. It says, good afternoon, sure is a beautiful day. And it still looks like it's nighttime. And then at the other one, it says, whew, I'm tired. It's way past my bedtime. And they're all out during the day. Seasons at the poles are opposite. So when the North Pole has winter, the South Pole has summer. And then six months later, when it's winter at the South Pole, it's summer at the North Pole. So they flip flop. So in one place at the top of the earth, it's always gonna be winter or summer. And in the South Pole at the bottom of the earth, it's always gonna be summer or winter. It says every six months. Along the equator is a warm, it is warm all the time. The temperature stays about the same all through the year. You can see why <clears throat> if you look at the experiment with the orange, here's the experiment that I was talking to you about. Here's the north half or hemisphere of the earth. Here's the southern half or southern hemisphere. And this is what they're calling the equator because it divides the earth into two equal parts. That's where they got the name equator. And here's the pen that's showing the equator. It says, watch the pen to see what happens. You'll see that day and night are just about the same length in the summer and in the winter, spring and in fall. So this part of the earth where they're showing the equator it's always the same temperature because it's orbiting and rotating in the same pattern every day. That's good if you like warm weather all the time, but it's also nice to see snow every once in a while, to see flowers and birds during springtime, and to go swimming in the summer. And nice to have pumpkins in the fall. So if you live near the equator, in Central America, in parts of Africa, in the Mediterranean. Those places are, are cool and warm most of the year. 
and it says if you like warm weather, that's the place you should live. But if you want to see pumpkins, you got to live in a place that's either in the northern or southern hem hemisphere. Year after year, the days change, and so do the seasons. We have winter, spring, summer, and fall because the sun warms the earth and because the axis, that's this portion of the diagram of the earth is tilted. So that's some new learning. If you look at the diagram here, you'll notice that the sun is making it day on the continent of North America and South America. And if you look here closely, it's making it night closer towards Europe and Africa and over towards the other parts of the globe. And it's saying that even though the earth looks like it's sitting straight, it's actually sitting at a tilt. So when it's turning, it's creating those seasons in the Northern and Southern hemisphere. Now, I know that that's a lot of information to kind of understand. So I wanted to give you a chance to look at our anchor chart and just kind of think about some of the things that we could possibly write down to help us with our key details. We already know that the earth makes the sun hot and cold. We know that the earth turns to make day and night, but I really liked the part where it said that there was an axis, that part where it talked about the tilt. So let's write that up here. The earth has an axis that tilts. And because it's on a tilt, that means it's moving at kind of an angle when it's rotating. It's not sitting straight up and down. Reminds me of a top when it starts to get wobbly. When it turns on its axis, it's creating that opportunity for it to be warmer here when we're close to the sun and colder here. Because not only are we facing away from the sun, the bottom of the earth is also far, far away from the sun's warm rays. So the tilt of the earth's axis also helps create the seasons throughout the year. Now we've got one, two, three, four more sun rays to fill in. And I know our book was a little short today. So I'm going to open up the back of the book and they have a really cool section. And it's fun facts about the sun. And I'm just going to read a few of those to you and we're going to add some of that information to our chart. Because sometimes when I'm researching something, I don't have to make up a new sentence. I just collect the facts as they are. It says the sun has been giving off light for the last 4.5 billion years. Light travels about 186,000 miles per second. Anybody ever heard of light speed? I know my son likes to watch Star Wars and they talk a lot about light speed in Star Wars. So that means light super fast. We can see it all the time because it's really fast. It takes about eight minutes to travel from the sun to the earth. And considering it's 93 million miles away, that's super duper fast. The sun's temperature is 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Whoa. And it's 27 million degrees Fahrenheit at the center. I don't think I'd want to visit the sun. The average distance from the Earth to the sun is 93 million miles away. We learned that last week. And the sun is so large that one million planets the size of the Earth could fit inside of it. Oh, here's something we can add to our chart because it pertains to patterns and seasons. The sun spins around, <clears throat> the sun spins around once every 27.4 days. So the sun actually doesn't spin. I think what it's saying is we spin and we are circulate, circulating around the sun and rotating our, on our axis every 27.4 days. And that's actually close to a month. So every time the month um, changes like from February to April, or excuse me, February to March, March to April, um, then we're moving around the sun for, for one complete orbit. So that's interesting. So it takes 
27.4 days to spin around the sun. That's pretty awesome. Because remember the sun is in the center of our solar system. The highest temperature ever recorded in the world was 134 degrees. Ooh, that had to be in summer if it's gonna be that hot. The world's highest average temperature is 94. So that's pretty, that's pretty average for our situation in the summer. We get to be, you know, anywhere from 92 to 96 degrees on a, on a really hot day in June, and, or excuse me, in July or August. And it says the lowest temperature recorded on Earth was 128 degrees below zero. That has to be somewhere in the Southern Hemisphere, I'm, I'm guessing, and it is. It says it was in Antarctica. All right, so we've got most of our sun rays filled up. There's a few spaces left down here at the bottom. And I'm just gonna challenge you to maybe do some research with your family tonight on why the sunshine makes the seasons and how we can add to our anchor chart. Um, because I kind of cut our lesson short because of the experiment of the book, um, I want some help from you guys. So if you can comment on our dojo story or if you can comment on mine, it'll pop up and show me that you've been responding to the YouTube channel. And I'll add any new information that you find out about the sun and the seasons to our anchor chart tomorrow when we come back together. Um, remember, our main idea is sunshine makes the seasons, and we're looking for key details that help support how the sun creates those different patterns in our environment. Hope you have a great night, and um, see you back tomorrow. See ya.